Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kristen, and if you're new here, welcome to my little corner of the interwebs where I come at you every week or so and share what I've been making. Uh, we do a lot of, primarily, we do a lot of knitting. Uh, lately, there's been a heck of a lot of quilting, and I also have been dabbling in crochet. So if you are multi-craftual, uh, you are in a very good place. Gather around, grab a cup of something, and let's get into things. Uh, yeah, and if you are a returning viewer, uh, you might notice something different happening with the background. Yes, I am once again recording from my sunroom because Dennis is working from home. So uh, yeah, he's upstairs and he's like very close to my craft room. So we're in the sunroom this week. And yeah, I, I actually, again, like I really like this room just because it's so sunny and airy and I have this nice little sofa here that I can chill on. And yeah, anyway, maybe I should turn this into my craft room. I don't know. I don't know how Dennis would feel about that. Um, but anyway, I've got lots to share with you this week. I don't know if you can tell, I've got a nice little nice little pile of, of quilts over here that I'm gonna talk about in a moment. Um, but before I get into that, I've got some knitting. Oh yes, I have some knitting, finally. Uh, yeah, if, if you've been tuning in for the past couple of weeks, you know I've been going strong. Strong on the quilting, I've been going strong on the crochet, but lately, quilting, is where it's at for me. I've been doing a lot of it. Um, but I have not forgotten knitting. I did get the knitting bug a couple weeks ago when I was I was um, cleaning my, my craft room. I was tidying up. And as I was tidying my craft room, I pulled out all of my project bags and found a whole bunch of yarn cakes. I found scraps. I found full-on cakes that I wound up for particular projects that you know, either I started that I that are just never going to come to fruition. So I have I have a lot of my own hand dyed yarn caked up that yeah just I realized I just need to do something with them rather than let them pile up so that got me thinking let's let's cast on something scrappy and of course the first first designer to come to mind when you think of scraps Stephen West right am I right and I have to say there has always been this one pattern that he designed that I've always wanted to make but I've had a couple of failure to launches when it came to casting that project on, and that project is the Marled Magic Shawl. Um, I even took a class, I, I forget how many birthdays ago it was, but for my birthday, I treated myself to a Stephen West class on, I think it was the Marled Magic Shawl, and it was at DU Knit in New Jersey. And yeah, it was, it was such a great class. Um, and I cast on for this project in the class, but I think it was the color colors that I chose and the yarn that I was using that I just really wasn't in love with. So I kind of, again, let, let it fall to the wayside, cast it on again a while later, let it fall to the wayside. And if you know me as a knitter, when it comes to compiling, you know, scraps and stuff to create fades and color combinations, I get stuck on analysis paralysis. So, you know, looking at all these cakes that I had amassed over the course of some time, I started to, you know, seeing them all together, I was like, wow, I think, I think I actually have something here, something that I like that I'm actually going to enjoy working with and enjoy wearing once the project is done. So yeah, that's that's what I've been working on, all that to say. Um, and yeah, living in my, my Logstead cabin project bag. Guys, how cute is this? I mean, clearly this project, it's housing a lot of, uh, this project bag is housing a lot of scraps right now. So I think it's kind of outgrowing this bag, but right, you know, just to sit next to me on my desk, it's just been a nice little bucket to keep all of my, my yarn cakes and project in. So, but anyway, yes, this project bag is by The Logstead, who is also known as Tanya. She has an Instagram uh, down below. I will link to her Instagram down below in the description box, along with everything else that I mentioned in this episode. But right now she does not have an online shop. She's only selling through her Instagram, but I will, again, link to her page, her uh, Instagram feed down below where you can see all of her gorgeous, gorgeous bags. But this one, I love it. I love it. Yeah. And, it, and it's quilted, it's quilted. Can we talk about the quilt? Yeah, here for it, completely here for it. Um, but anyway, yes, back to <laughs> my Marl's Magic. Uh, yeah, here is where we are with it. Can, yeah, it's been, it's been holding my attention very, very well. Um, I mean, I feel like I've been saying that about all of my projects that I cast on, but you know, this is where we are with it. And yes, it's move-tastic, my friends. I, 
I'm in love. I'm so in love and so glad that I cast this on. So yeah, it starts out with this mesh business over here. Um, and all it is, I'm, this is all of my hand dyed yarn, woolen vine yarns. Uh, for this section right here, if my memory serves me right, this is opal held together with Poe. And I'm gonna try, yeah, just very, very, <laughs> lots, of, lots of color and depth happening in there. It's very subtle, it's not too crazy. Um, and then here, all throughout this uh, seed stitch gradient, I am holding Rochester together with several other of my colorways. So all throughout is Rochester. Here we have Rochester and Poe. Rochester and Weep, it fades into Weep over here, and then it fades into Grim, and then it fades into Volenbein number nine, and then it fades back into Rochester and Weep again. And then for over here, he has you start doing a brioche stitch, like a one, uh, like a one color brioche. If you're familiar with knitting two color brioche, typically you do two passes with each color for every row. But for this one, because you're just holding two strands together for, for throughout this entire section, you're only doing one pass per row. So that's pretty cool. Um, it makes it go by so much quicker. Um, but yeah, for here, I'm holding together Grimm and a newer colorway that I dyed called Dance Macabre. And I just love it, guys. Oh, yeah, this is... Yeah, and yeah, it's a true to Stephen West. This is going to be a schlanket, <laughs> and it has a very wonky shape right now. But it's all going to be filled in to become like a asymmetrical triangle. And yeah, I am having so much fun with it. Uh, and again, it looks super complicated, but it's in, an incredibly chill knit. Um, yeah, I can easily just let my hands go on autopilot, and you know, all the stitches are memorizable. I can just hang back, watch. YouTube videos, watch movies, and Bob's your uncle. And I realized I dropped a stitch. Oh no, guys. <laughs> There's a stitch right here. I don't know how you can see, but yeah, I dropped, I dropped a brioche stitch. As a beginner brioche knitter, that would have freaked me out, but I know a trick. I know a trick um, to saving your brioche stitches. I'm not, I may, I may have done a tutorial a while back. If I did, I will link it down below. If not, Put a pin in that. I might, I might do a tutorial on how to save your brio stitches. Um, let me know in the comments down below if that's something that you'd be interested in. But yeah, um, needle size again, not swatching. Especially when it comes to Stephen West patterns, you rarely have to swatch. Um, but I'm using the suggested needle size, which is a size US eight, uh, five point zero millimeter, and these are Chiaogu, Chiaogi vet Chia. <laughs> Chiaogu lace, I believe. Yeah. So anyway, great needles. Typically my favorite go-to knitting needles are Haya Haya Sharps, but this is what first flew out of my needle organizer. So that's what we're working with. Um, so yeah, that is my Merled Magic Shawl by Stephen West. And yeah, I've got a lot of, a lot of colorways in here. We've got, we've got Sad Beige, of course. Yeah. I had grand plans. Not sure what happened there, but uh, this is Don's Macabre. This is the one that I'm currently working with, held together with, with Grimm. So, yeah, it's that one. Anyway, I'm not gonna go through all these. It's just, trust me, there's a whole bunch of cakes in here. So, <laughs> yay. All right, moving along, let's talk about the elephants in the room, shall we? <laughs> We've got quilts, guys. Uh, yeah, as you know, if you've been following my Instagram feed, if you've been catching up with my mini waffles, if you remember, yeah, quilting, I don't know, it's taking over my life. Just like crochet did a couple of, of months ago. I mean, I'm still, I'm still going heavy on the crochet as well, um, but right now I'm just, I'm just taking a, a detour down into the land of quilting and I like it here. I like it a lot. <laughs> so yeah, right now I have, uh, three quilts sitting next to me. I have three over here and I have two over here that I'm going to talk about. <laughs> Where should we start? Where should we start? Um, let's start with the quilts that I mentioned in the last episode where I was going to send them out to Missouri Star Quilt Company to be long armed. Uh, those have since been returned to me and so far I've finished binding one. So one is completely complete. It's done. It's photographed. It's, it's everything. Um, and this is my, my William Morris Kensington kaleidoscope quilt. And holy cow, guys, I, 
I'm in love. I'm in love. I, you know, I posted photos of this on Instagram. Um, I will, yeah, I, I'm just going to pop a photo of it in all its glory here so you can see what it looks like from afar. But um, they did such a beautiful job. I, I, my jaw dropped when I saw that the, the top stitching that they did. And I will say when you send out your quilts to Missouri Star Quilt Company, you have to fill out a form on their website. So you get to choose the um, they give you a bunch of options of patterns to choose from that you want them to use, you know, to quilt your quilt um, and thread and all that stuff. Um, and you also have the option to leave it to the experts. So in this case, I left it to the experts. I, you know, I, I put all of my trust in them. I know they did a beautiful job with my last quilt. Um, and I, you know, I said, hey, <laughs> have at it. Let me show you the back of it so you can see what the pattern actually looks like because I feel like it just goes hand in hand with the, the quilt fabric in itself. I mean, can we, I, I cannot, I cannot guys. Look at these beautiful like swirls. It, it's so like floral and um, yeah, it just, it, it definitely mimics the fabric. Like it totally picks up on the florets over here and the flourishes and everything happening in here is happening in the, the stitching. So yeah, oh my gosh, guys. Um, so I think, you know, I talked about it with Dennis and I think this, and, and you guys have also suggested that this go up in our dining room because as I mentioned, I wanted to quilt something to hang in the, on, on one of the dining room walls. And I think this is it. I will stand up. Look at that. Oh my gosh, guys. It, yeah. It's huge. It's huge. So, oh, so let me see if I can show you a close up of the binding. I'm I'm getting better, guys. Like the binding, I'm very proud of. Lots of neat edges and tucks. Yeah. It's just I'm I'm so happy. So happy with the way this turned out. This was my first fussy cut project. And if you're not familiar with what fussy cutting is, it's when you go in and you cut out specific parts of the print in a fabric. So I will show you one of the blocks over here. So, you know, as you can see from here, I went in and fussy cutted all these rabbit heads and arranged them in a block like so. And I'm, you know, when I started this project, I was like, I don't know what I just got myself into, but it's so rewarding. So rewarding, guys. Um, so that is my Kensington Kaleidoscope quilt. That is going to go up on our wall in the dining room. I'm gonna hang you over here for a second. Okay, and then the next quilt that they sent back to me is the Montana Primrose quilt. And <laughs> here we are. Um, and yeah, well, they did an absolutely beautiful job. I, they chose a perfect pattern to go along with the quilt. Um, I'll try and hold this up. Yeah, you're, you really can't see it from the main side, but this is what it looks like quilted. Um, and for the back, they chose this wave. Let me see if I can get that to show up on camera. Yeah, it's very subtle, but yeah, it's just kind of like a swirly little wave. And yeah, I think the little points definitely pick up on the triangles. So let me stand up so you can see. Again, like these are so big, there's no way you can stand back so you can see them, but um, yeah, it just, the quilting, um, I know with this one, I was very concerned about, you know, like, because when I, when everything was pieced together, because this was my first foray into quilting triangles or piecing together triangles, triangles are a bit tricky. So, you know, if you're not exactly precise, you know, things can get a little warped, a little wonky. And yeah, this quilt was definitely not lying flat once it was all pieced together. Um, but, but that's okay. I mean, it, I don't, again, like the thing that I love about quilting is that I'm never, I'm never aiming to be perfect. I love just like the handmade quality of quilts. Like you can tell like by looking at certain quilts that it was either, you know, made by someone's hands versus a machine or store-bought, if that makes any sense. And yeah, I just, I, something about that just, I love, I love it so much. Um, so yeah, I wasn't, to, uh, you know, upset that it wasn't lying flat. I even wrote in the notes when I sent it out to them, I said, hey, I know this quilt doesn't lie flat. If there are some creases or puckering when you quilt it, I'm totally fine with that. Um, and yeah, they, again, like they just did a beautiful job and I feel like quilting just solves all 
it solves and conceals all manner of <laughs> sewing sins, if you will, because it flattens everything out. Um, and now, now it lies flat. Uh, so yeah, all that is left to do is to bind it. So I think that is what I will do this holiday weekend. Uh, this weekend is, or the next Monday is Labor Day weekend here in the United States. So Dennis and I, we are heading up to Cape Cod and I think I will take this with me and get some binding done on the road trip up. Um, or, or while I'm there, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, again, like this was the one that was supposed to grace the wall of our dining room. And <laughs> again, like it's just, it's just too boudoir for me. This makes more sense in a bedroom than in a dining room wall. I don't know. Just my own personal brand of crazy, personal preference. I don't know. Um, and, and many of you seem to agree. So yeah. So that's the second quilt that they sent back to me. And, and I'm happy to report that I shipped out my night vision quilt. So the night vision quilt that I made out of Liberty fabric that has been shipped off to Missouri star quilt company to be long armed. And I will say that this is probably going to be the last quilt that I send out for a while, at least a while. Um, because yeah, it not going to lie. It's an investment to have your quilts long armed. Um, the only reason that I have been doing it is because, you know, when I had only had my Janome machine, Quilting larger quilts on that is not a picnic. It's just, it's very cumbersome, very, yeah, it's, it doesn't really, yeah, it's not easy, guys. So, but now that I have my, my new Juki, Brunhilda, I, I can do all the free, the free motion quilting I want on it, and it's, it's glorious, and I'm going to talk about that in a second. Um, okay, so that is another quilt. I'm going to fold that and put it over here, and then... Because I had so many scraps left over from this project, I went ahead and made a scrappy Irish chain. So this is where we are with the Irish chain. I'm actually going to be uh, free, mo not free motion. No, I'm going to use the walking foot on my Juki to quilt this. I'm just going to do, let me see. I'm going to do like straight diagonal lines and then in the last episode, I posed the idea of maybe doing some English paper pieced florets and putting them here in these little blank squares, these little blank patches. Um, however, I did do a mock-up of, there is, there is a bird outside this window and it is tweeting. It's tweeting. Can you hear? Yeah. So, um, so I did do a mock-up florette and put it here and it's just way too big. I mean, I could downsize the, the, um, the florets, but at the same time, I think it's just going to take away from the overall look of this project. Um, so I'm going to do away with the florets and instead I'm going to have fun doing some free motion quilting inside these squares. So thank you so much to everybody for all your input. I know I asked last week, I said, you know, what do you think? Should I go with a floret in here and, you know, add a little something else? And many of you just said, skip the florets have fun doing some free motion quilting. So that's what we're going to do. Um, so yeah, that is coming down the pipeline. The only, I think the only reason why I haven't quilted this yet is because I'm just so over the fabric. If I see this fabric again, I'm just kind of gonna, you know, lose my mind a little bit. Um, but don't worry, I'm going to come back. She's, it's a quilt sandwich. We have batting, we have backing, we're pinned. It's, it's ready to go. So I think that is going to be the next project on, on Brunhilde. Um, so there's that. And then the other quilt that I made, I don't even, did I even, I didn't even talk about this on the channel because it happened so quickly. I just whipped this up in like two, three days. I kid you not. Um, so yeah, the quilt top was done in two, three days because it's, it's very simple. Uh, but again, like I have grand plans to decorate many walls in this house with quilts. I don't know what's in the water, guys. Um, and and I sat down with Dennis and we both decided on this one quilt pattern by Lo and Behold Stitchery. I think it's called Lo and Behold Stitchery. Lo and Behold Quilts. I'll pop it in the down bar. But she has this really great pattern called the Getaway Quilt. And it's exactly what you see here. I mean, yeah, I'll stand up. I still have to photograph this. But yeah, it's just a very simple, modern, geometric monochromatic <laughs> quilt. And again, it's, you know, very straightforward, super easy to assemble. All of these are little block or square blocks put together to create this really cool design. And the cool thing about this pattern is you, she gives you three different variations. So the, it's called the getaway quilt. 
And then she, there's one variation called the beach getaway, another called the mountain getaway, and a third called, I'm forgetting the third getaway, but there's another getaway in there. <laughs> we settled on the beach getaway. I think, I think this is the beach getaway. I'm, I forget, but we, Dennis and I both like this layout the best. So that's what we went with. Um, and I did top, I did top stitch this on Brunhilde, but just using a, a walking foot and doing simple straight lines along the, the white stripes only. Um, I consider doing black top stitching on the black strips, but at the same time, I really just like the clean, like the clean backing. I didn't want to see any black stitching on the back. So yeah, I, and also I really kind of like the way that, you know, the top stitching in the white areas make the black stripes pop a little bit, but yeah. And the binding. Oh my gosh, guys. I love the chartreuse binding. It is so cool. And this is the exact fabric that the pattern called for. I just, I bought the same exact fabric that they used. Um, and it's all, I think Bella solids, Bella solids or Kona. I think it's Bella solids, um, in charcoal white and then yeah, chartreuse. And it just came together so, so quickly. Um, I will say like quilting this on the machine while it was a dream, it was a little, I, it was cumbersome because you have all these angles here. So I'm doing like one stripe rotating the quilt to do the short end of a stripe rotating again to do another long stripe. And then you have like all these other shorter stripes in here and you're just constantly rotating, rotating an entire quilt. This is, this is the crib size quilt, my friends. So it is the smallest size. And <laughs> if I did a larger quilt, I think I would have, you know, lost it at some point. I don't know. Um, but yeah, what, what a great little pattern. Um, and I will say that I, we did hold it up to the wall that we want to hang it on in the, in the living room. And in hindsight, it seemed like it would go, but looking at it now, I feel like it's a little too modern and a little too stark contrast to what's happening in our dining, in our living room. We have a lot of, uh, it's, it's very traditional in the sense, you know, it's lots of classic pieces, a lot of muted tones. And, you know, I know, you know, Dennis, you know, leans more towards the side of modern decor, whereas I'm obviously on the side of classical traditional. Um, I kind of wanted to infuse his taste a little more into the space. I, this may have not have been the way to go, but, but, um, we do have a corner of the, the living room that we think it will, it will fit. Uh, and once we decide, I'll take photos of it and share it with you for sure. Um, but yeah, right now it's kind of, it's kind of in limbo, kind of like my Montana primrose quilt. Like, what do we do with it now? Um, I don't know. Cause it doesn't seem to go with what we originally intended it where we, it doesn't go with where we originally intended it to go. So anyway, but overall, I really, really enjoyed putting this together again, a great pattern. Um, yeah, she has, she has a lot of great patterns on her website that I'm actually, you know, I pin them to my Pinterest board. So, you know, they're there and I can make them when I'm, I'm ready because yeah, she's got beautiful, gorgeous patterns. Again, very modern leaning on the side of art deco. I will say, you know, just so great. So great. So yeah, that is my getaway quilt, which I will fold up. Yeah. I'll do another, Thing so you can see, yeah, it's just really, really fun. Um, and last but not least, oh my gosh, yeah, one more, one more quilt to share with you <laughs> that I finished in about, well, the cutting took a little time, not gonna lie. Um, but this is the Connecting Stars Table Runner by Missouri Star Quilt Company. And what is it? Um, Natalie and Jenny recently came out with a tutorial for this. And it is, I, I, as soon as I saw the pattern, I was like, I want to make that because I, I'm a sucker for stars, guys. Quilted stars, I am here for. And when I saw this, I was like, I, I totally have to cast the, I cast it on. <laughs> totally have to make it. Um, but it was funny because the, you know, I watched the tutorial and there is a lot of cutting. A lot of, um, not only are you cutting out the, all the pieces in here, you're really just cutting um, squares and rectangles. So there's that layer. And then the other layer is you have to square them up. So you have all these dog ears hanging off and you have to cut them down to size. So lots of truing up of sizes and it, that, that part tested my patience just a little bit, but thankfully I had a good audiobook on and I found a rhythm. So it wasn't all that bad. I actually found, you know, got into the flow of things. And before I knew it, I had all my pieces cut out and I was assembling. 
fabric that I used is this. I, I actually treated myself to some charm packs because you guys, you can do so much with charm packs. They're so, they're rel they're affordable. I think like one, one of these is like $11 US and you get like a whole taste of a fabric collection. So this one is Camellia, Camellia by Melody Miller. It's uh, for the Ruby Star Society. So here we go. Look at that, it has like teacups. Let me see, I don't wanna take this out because this one is still together. It has like these really fun teacups, um, spoons, and just like these really fun, like again, totally out of my comfort zone, but I have to say, that's the thing that I love about quilting because I don't have to wear it. <laughs> so, you know, normally when it comes to garments and stuff, I love knitting like dark neutrals for myself. Um, you know, that's, that's the only thing I really enjoy wearing and what I gravitate towards wearing. But when it comes to quilting, I can just go crazy. I can go crazy and have fun with color. I mean, I know I can do that with knitting, but at the end of the day, I'm not gonna wear something that's crazy and colorful. That's just not me. But when it comes to quilts, quilts, yeah. I mean, you can decorate with them. They keep you warm. They're, they, they have a purpose, but you don't have to go out wearing them outside the house. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I can definitely play with color to my heart's content. I mean, look at that. That is so fun. So anyway, um, yeah, this is a second charm pack that I purchased. Um, I did purchase a couple of others that I'll share with you at a later date, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to have fun, play around with them and see what you can do. But yeah, charm packs, if you're new to quilting, these are your jam. I mean, just buy yourself a fun, fun, a fun charm pack, find yourself a small quilt pattern and have fun. Um, so yeah, so uh, this project took one charm pack and then I think, not even half a yard of background fabric. So I had leftover white fabric from my getaway quilt and put that in here. Uh, just, I had just enough. So I had that and then I had leftover backing from my, what is it? My Irish chain scrappy quilt. So we're working with lots of scraps here, guys. We're making use. Um, and as you can see for the binding, yeah, leftover, leftover binding from the getaway quilt. And last but not least, I did I did free motion quilt this on Brunhilde and holy cow, I had a blast. It was so much fun. I did post a reel to my Instagram feed so you can see it there, but you know, it's not perfect. There are a couple of mistakes in here, but for the most part, here's what it looks like on the back. Just lots of fun loop-de-loos and twirls and yeah. I'm getting there guys, I'm getting there. But you know, for first, for first like legit free motion quilting project, I'm sold, so sold. Already thinking about my next quilt project. I don't know what that's gonna be, but I have a lot of fabric at my disposal and I'm gonna have fun choosing the next project, which I'm hoping to start today or tomorrow. I don't know. But anyway, let me stand up so you can see this. But look at that. It's so fun guys. And I don't know how well you can tell, but I did try to do some form of gradient throughout. So it starts out kind of like in the pinks over here and then it fades into the oranges and the teals and then the lighter shades. I don't know, still working on that aspect, but yeah, this is really fun. Um, so yeah, those are my cool projects, guys. I am having so much fun. Can you tell, can you tell? So those are all my quilts, guys. Uh, wow, yeah, I don't know. I don't know where all this quilting energy is coming from, but I'm here for it. I'm enjoying it, I love it. And if you are too, we're in good company. So next up, before I let you guys go, I do have quite a few acquisitions that I would like to share with you because, you know, I know some of you really do enjoy seeing, you know, not, not that it's a haul, it's not a haul, but these are just little, little tidbits that came into my life. Little treats, if you will, <laughs> I call them treats now. Um, but yeah, anyway, I thought I would share them with you. So, you know, with my Missouri Star quilt, um, quilting service that I purchased, I also purchased some other fabric from their website um, because, you know, free shipping and all that. Uh, and I treated myself to a new jelly roll. Yeah, so this one is called uh, Cheddar and Coal. <laughs> Cheddar and Coal number two by Pam Buddha. Uh, here's the label and I, I don't want to take it out of the cake right now, but um, it's, it's, it's autumn, autumn in a roll. And I 
love it. Just lots of, you know, again, those Civil War re recreation prints, reproduction prints, um, but you get lots of creams, blacks, orange, hence the name cheddar, uh, lots of florals. Uh, and I did also get some fabric for uh, the, the border and binding. Again, I don't know what I'm gonna make with it, but it's it never hurts to get some extra yardage for the border and the binding. So here is, I'll take it out so you can see. But I got a yard and a half for a border. I just love this burnt umber color. It's yeah, so nice. And then in another colorway, this is the black version of it. So yeah, so there's that. Um, and for the, yeah, this is gonna be for the binding. So this one is just half a yard. Um, there's that. So. We've got some autumnal quilts coming up. <laughs> it's gonna be so fun. Uh, and then I also picked up um, this quilting thread. It's, let me see, it's by Glide. It's Glide number 40. And it comes, like Glide number 40 comes very highly recommended for quilting, like free motion quilting. And it has like this kind of like silky sheen to it. Um, yeah, so I actually used it to quilt this. And yeah, it works, it works beautifully. Really love it, highly recommend. Um, so with that, I also, this was on sale on the website. A couple, of, most of these things were on sale. Um, again, totally out of my comfort zone. I don't know why I decided to add this to my cart, but here we are. This is by Fancy by Dylan Mirzwinski. It's called Fancy and it's by Wyndham Fabrics. So this is a layer cake, 10 inch squares. And again, like the charm pack, you know, you get a whole taste of a whole, um, fabric collection. Uh, just some really, like I love these gems. I don't know, there's something about like pinks and orange that I really like that color combination. Oh, this green, yeah. Look at that, that's so pretty. I'm excited about this, yeah. This orange, yeah, look at that, that's so cool. Anyway, so that was fun. Had to come home to me. Uh, the other thing I got, which like, I don't, why? I don't know why, <laughs> but I saw these, this color combination. I'm like, yes, I need this in my life. And I believe this is one of their daily deals. So everyday Missouri star, not sponsored guys. I cannot resist. So I picked up <laughs> this Batik layer cake. I mean, this is Island Batik, um, nightshade Batiks. And it just, it's a, this gorgeous gradient from like a deep rich purple all the way to a bright red. But I love these little peach and orange shades in between. It's just so, so pretty. So yeah, I, again, I don't know what I'm gonna make with it. It was on sale. Um, but yeah, if you're not familiar with Missouri Star, they, they have daily deals where they just have sales every day. And this was one of the, the items, so, you know came home to me. Um, and then the other cool thing is that because I'm a loyal customer and I amass points, <laughs> I got a freebie. Um, so this was one of the freebies that they offered and I thought it was a pretty good deal. So this is their triple play pattern book. If you're not familiar with Missouri Star, this is Jenny and these are her two daughters, Misty and Natalie. And every month or so they come out with a YouTube video called Triple Play where each one makes a quilt pattern or designs a quilt pattern using one particular motif. So they made a book about it. And, and I love the fact that it's spiral bound, making it really easy to flip through. I love a good spiral bound, guys. It's, I mean, yeah. Anyway, lots of cool ideas in here. Lots of instructions, like the pineapples. Pineapples, I can make a pineapple quilt. Let's have fun making pineapple quilts, guys. Um, so yeah, lots of cool techniques that I can learn. And you know, I mean, we've got flying geese patterns. We've got, we've got, what else have we got? Let me see. We have pinwheel patterns, sash square star patterns. I mean, there's everything in here. I, you know, there are a lot of patterns in here that I could totally see myself making. So yeah, I thought, I thought that was a pretty good deal. <gasps> morning, morning glory, I mean. This one, I totally want to make, totally. Um, so anyway, that that was another thing. 
that came home to me. Uh, the other thing that I am really, really excited to share with you is a gift from one of you lovely viewers, and I hope she doesn't mind me calling her out, but Joan, Joan, if you're watching, hello. Thank you, thank you so much for this, but she reached out to me and she, you know, as you know, I've been falling heavily down the crochet rabbit hole. I've been making all the doilies. I mean, case in point, we've, we've got a doily pillow over here <laughs> that I made. Um, so she reached out and so generously offered to send me these gorgeous vintage crochet magazines. Um, they, let, me, let me put this down. I have a whole box over here of stuff. Um, so these are by Work Basket, Home and Needlecraft for Pleasure and Profit. So these are from, from 1951. We have one from 1951, 19, okay. One from 1952. Yeah, so a few from 1951 and 1952, but here's what one looks like. I mean, guys, yeah. Um, here's another one. Here's another one. I mean, how? cool are these? Um, so yeah, Joan, <laughs> you have my number. Um, and the cool, you know, all of these are uh, like a peek into the past. I mean, the way patterns are written now are not the way they were written then. Um, lots have changed. Uh, like more modern patterns are definitely a lot more handholdy. Uh, these just assume that you know how to knit, how to crochet, how to sew, how to bake. I mean, they have, oh, guys, like, Here's the old ad for sugar and cream crochet yarn. I mean, guys, look at this. This is, I mean, amazing. Like, I'm just how I'm just so entertained by the ads in here alone. It's mittens, gloves. You can hand knit gloves. So cool. I mean, look at the, just the doily on on the cover is beautiful in itself. I want to make that. I could totally see myself making that. Um, it's so pretty. So pretty. Um, so yeah, there's that one. And then let me see if there's anything exciting in this one. I won't, obviously I won't go through all of these with you. Okay. We have, we have a recipe for beef stew in here. I mean, look at that. There's beef stew. I can, I should try making one of these recipes and see how it holds up today. Um, that would be an interesting experiment. Oh, this is pretty. Let me see. What is this? <gasps> Women are delighted with easy to make luxurious shillcraft. Ready cut rugs. What is, oh, that's an ad, sorry. Oh, well, make your own rugs. Yeah, there's there's a pattern in here to make your own rugs. Um, and it's brilliant. And they give you like a whole little template in here that you can copy. And then they give you instructions for making your own rugs. I mean, there's everything, everything. These are so fun. Joan, Joan, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Um, yeah, what a, what a really lovely, package to get in the mail. Uh, truly, these these are in a good home and I will take care of them and we'll have so much fun pouring over them and making things from them. Um, I'm really excited. So you're the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. One, one more thing that I really want to share with you before I let you guys go. Um, another treat to myself was a project bag by my dear friend Katie of Katie Did Bags. Um, if you don't follow Katie on the socials, what are you doing with your life? She is an incre another, another incredible project bag maker. Um, and she makes these really cool see-through clear vinyl. I think, yeah, I guess you can call this vinyl, um, vinyl project bags. And, you know, I saw this and I was like, well, first of all, how, how fun are the stars on here? Um, but I saw it and I liked the fact that it was crossbody. Crossbody number one. Number two, um, as you know, Dennis and I, we go on a lot of hikes. We go to the beach a lot. And yeah, I can totally take my knitting along in here. It keeps everything safe from the elements. Um, but also I, you know, as you know, I like taking my camera along with me on hikes and, and the like. And I bring a couple camera, a couple lens changes with me. So while my camera is using one lens, I can keep another lens in here just for like a lens, something to hold the lens while I have my camera on my shoulder. I thought this would be a really cool little thing and keep knitting in as well again. Um, so yeah, anyway, again, I will link to Katie's Etsy shop down below. She's got so many awesome, a lot of Halloween themed bags, bags as well. So go check them out. And Katie is so generously offering 10% off on everything in her shop now until it's in the down bar. <laughs> Use code Kristen10 at checkout. Uh, that is Kristen with an I-N. My name is spelled K-R-I-S-T-I-N. I know it's 
there are many ways to spell Kristen, but uh, just so you know, it's an I-N at the end. So Kristen 10, and you'll get 10% off at, from everything in her shop. So Katie, thank you so very much. Uh, yeah, I was really excited to share that with you guys as well. Cannot wait, cannot wait to use this. Um, so that's the show, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I, if you made it to this point, um, I feel like I've blabbed on for much too long. Um, if you are in the US, again, have a happy Labor Day weekend. I hope you get lots of time off, lots of extra making time. All right, my friends, that's all she wrote. So until the next video, have an amazing, again, amazing weekend, happy knitting, happy making, whatever your craft is, and I will see you soon. Bye.